pull on the strings. And this I could see for like a, a big dog. Like I could see giving this thing to, because it's a decent sized rope. And it looks like, you know, they're, tear, they're tearing on little strings. These are little, two little dachshunds, a brown one and a brown and white one. Uh, and, but you could, I could see a big dog handling that one. And this one is a big rope ball. It says mammoth flossy chews on it. So does this help with their teeth too, I assume? Yeah, uh, rope toys are, so this is new variations on an older theme on, on the rope toys. Uh, what they're doing now is starting to tie them into different knots, um, wrap them uh, rope on rope, and so it just makes different uh, uh, types of rope that they can chew on, and what they're trying to do is make it so it's more difficult to chew it apart. Um, so the ones that the little dachshunds are going after right now, um, it's just a very tightly wound uh, uh, rope, and it's made for that small to medium dog. It's nice and long, though. This thing's like two feet long, mm -hmm. um, but it's very tightly wound, and it, it helps the dogs um, with their chewing tendency. So right now, these little dachshunds are eight weeks old, nine weeks old, and so they're teething. So they're just like, oh, if I could just chew on something right now, that would be great. Is, is the feeling that they have. And we've all had that feeling when we were younger and we were losing our teeth. That feeling of, oh, it felt so good to chew on something. These dogs have that same thing going on right now. So they're like, oh, it feels so good to chew on this dog. <laughs> so that one was meant for the smaller dogs um, where, again, you, you want to get something that's appropriate size for your dog if you want it to last. So the bigger, the generally the better um, up until where they can't get their mouth around it. Uh, so th this smaller one is not going to be good for the large breeds. What I have sitting on the table is another rope, and this is in this uh, un ununtieable knot uh, scheme that they do. And they, it is, gosh, nine inches, I believe, yeah, about I nine inches in diameter. It just we're <laughs> getting a little rough with yeah. each other. One, break it up, break it one up. One probably missed the rope and chewed on the other's tail and said, <laughs> that tasted good. Come here, sweetie. I should mention real quick uh, that I did put the pictures up there on the website uh, on our Facebook page. So if you want if you want to go to KXIC's Facebook page, you can see these two lovely ladies that we have in the studio, two really, really cute dachshunds. And Devin, I know you're listening. No. And no, no, and no. And Jack, you're listening too. No puppy right now. And Jack's saying, yes, puppies. She's trying to give it some kind of cute rabbit. And another <laughs> quick side note, you have, I don't know if it's still there, but there's a gray, loppier rabbit there. Oh. It's, re it's really cute. And it's like the most docile rabbit we've ever had. Like most of the time, you, if you pet it and play with it, it, it starts kicking and what, she just picks it up and it just sits right there. That's yeah. how I remember when we, I was a kid and uh, my sister, my older sister, uh, we were at a pet store. She picked up a guinea pig, exactly the same thing, the most docile guinea pig. And she goes, look at mom, this one didn't even run away. And that was the end. Yeah. And then that became Wilbur, our guinea pig. You kept Wilbur. Yeah, Wilbur was a, a great pig. So uh, anyway, that's another example of all the great pets you have there at Petland of Iowa City. Now back to this. So this is a rope ball. It's about nine inches. You said very colorful. It's green, purple, and blue. Yeah. Uh, so it's attractive. Twisted guys. knots, uh, and and I could see a big dog playing around with that thing too. Yeah. You know? nine, the knot is nine inches in diameter. I'm not talking about the length here of the whole rope. This thing is just a massive knot. And so it, it'll take a long while for your dog to get through this kind of a thing. And and I always point out, like there is, I've never found the indestructible toys. There are toys that last longer and everything. And realize your dog's goal is to take that thing apart. And so uh, it, it's satisfaction in getting it apart. And I understand there's some economics involved with, oh my gosh, you just ate that whole thing, and I spent what on it, you know. So, yeah, we, we can help you at Petland with finding the more durable toys, uh, but realize, there, yeah, there is no such thing as an indestructible toy. They just, there are some that last longer. Yeah. And this huge knock is I one bet, of them. I bet this one lasts for a while because it's thick rope, and yeah. uh, it would take a while for a dog to get through that. And I think everybody who owns a, a dog specifically has had that happen where you buy a toy, maybe a cheap toy, and then within a couple of days, it's gone. It's like, yeah. oh, that was not really that cool. So, and know. believe it or not, there are different qualities in rope for dogs. I, it's, to me, it's one of those things, not really, are there? But the cheaper rope does, you, know, you go through it a lot quicker. So 
uh, when you get into the better ropes, they do last longer. So don't don't be afraid. I'm not talking many many dollars more. Just a couple of cents or whatever more for that uh, more expensive rope. Buy that more expensive rope because it, chances are in our store it is a higher quality rope, and you're going to be able to. It'll last longer as a result. I have the mic down. Uh, I pulled it down on the ground. You can hear them scurrying. <laughs> yeah. They're jump. They're yeah. running. They have over. not stopped since they come in here. This is fun. Uh, we have a uh, brown dachshund and uh, a brown and white dachshund. The brown and white one is, looks like shorter hair. The browner one, the brown, the all brown one has longer, a little bit longer hair. And now then it's going to get, uh, you know, they're both obviously going to get bigger, but that one might have a little bit longer hair as it gets uh, older. So, uh, so you have big basket products. You could probably talk about some other stuff here too. Yeah. We should do the amazing pet story though. Oh yeah, we yeah. Are. I guess we're off. That's off all right. Uh, so. We got to get back in the swing of things yeah. here. It's, uh, we'll get back going here. This one I thought was really cool. Uh, we'll save it there. I'll do it right now, and then we'll take our first break here. Uh, let's get big voice guy. Hey, watch out for the dachshunds. Don't step on them. I think I heard a oh. <laughs> he nibbled on his toe. Why does he wear sandals? Uh, he always wears sandals. I don't know. It's like middle of winter, and he always comes in wearing his sandals. He's groovy. He is. He thinks he's groovy. That's big voice guy. This is the amazing pet story of the week. Today we go out to Baltimore, and we go to the Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens. We get ready for football season. I thought this one would tie in very nicely for all you football fans. We're getting geared up for Hawkeye football here on KXIC. We've got Bears football on our sister station, WMT, Chicago Bears football. Uh, I'm a Bears fan and excited. Uh, also a Raiders fan, so I'm excited to see how the teams look. But the, the Ravens are in focus today. And they say here in this story, Ravens fans might bleed purple, but not many have a purple heart. But Luca, a 10-year-old German Shepherd, Belgian, uh-oh, I might need your help, Malinois? Malinois. Mal Malinois, thank you. That's why I've got you here. Uh, German Shepherd, Belgian Malinois mix had just three legs, uh, has just three legs. It came to the, Ra uh, the Ravens training camp as they're all getting ready for the season uh, to meet the coaches and players. Head coach Jim uh, John Harbaugh shared Luca's story with the team the night before practice and with Harbaugh's military connections that he made an in-person meeting possible. Luca lost a leg in an explosion from a roadside bomb while saving a platoon of U.S. Marines in Afghanistan in 2012. She was specialized search, a specialized search dog trained to find explosives. She went on three combat deployments, never had an injury when she was on patrol. Uh, for her efforts, Luca was awarded a prestigious Purple Heart, and she has it around her collar. She retired after eight years in the military. She lives in Finland right now with Gunnery Sergeant Chris Willingham, who also came to the Ravens facility. And uh, this dog lost a leg, uh, helping out our, our uh, finest and bravest there overseas, a platoon of U.S. Marines saved by this bomb-sniffing dog in, uh, in Afghanistan. So That's awesome. Luca, yeah. amazing pet story of the week, yeah. for sure. The military has got an unbelievable amount of amazing stories of how uh, dogs and other animals, horses, uh, that have helped out in all of our efforts. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one there. Uh, so shout out to Luca, the 10-year-old German Shepherd, Belgian Malinois mix. This is the Positively Petland Show on AM 800 KXIC. Coming up, more products to talk about from the trade show. We have dachshunds on the loose. They are running fast, and they are chasing each other and tackling each other, trying to get out all that energy, and I'll bet they'll fall asleep on your ride back to the to the pet Yeah, center. they were sleeping on the way down. <laughs> they were we sleeping were when, they, when they showed up. Yeah, they were. you brought them in, and they were sleeping in the in the crate. I opened it, and now it's just like Man. all systems go. I'm looking at you. <laughs> all systems go. I'm looking at you. Did they go all systems uh, on the floor yet here? They or? only did uh, one, did a number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's all cleaned up. I don't smell anything, so I think no, we're set for now. I think we're clear there. Check out our Facebook page if you want to see these two cuties. Uh, there's a picture, a great picture right up there on our Facebook timeline. You can check it out. This is the Positive Pelland Show. For Ron Salter and I'm Jay Capron. We'll be back with more after this. Good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. News coming up and sports. And then we'll be back to the pet show. Yeah, yeah. From the concept of the Center's Digital Studios. 
What uh, might have been listened for a while. What comes through on the feed here? Is it our mic still? Is there something coming through on the feed? Yeah, it's got to be that. I don't know. Yeah, I think it might be the mic. I'm at it. It's time to call absolute comfort. Hi. This is another one of your commercials. The endorsement. Which actually reminds me, if Beth hasn't gotten a hold of you yet, um, she's going to approach you about possibly doing an endorsement with me. Uh -huh. And that's something where I would actually get a cut of it, which would be kind of cool. Uh, but I would say, like, go to Petland. And I, one of the things I was thinking might be good is that top entry cat box. I have a specific commercial about that. And maybe put a display of those up front or somewhere where it's visible. Uh, and then the commercials would run. And I would say, you know, I use this box. And trust me, it's the best box in the world. And I don't think the picture of yet. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know. Yeah, use it. <laughs> but they're pushing those in August here, and so she'll probably talk to you. That's something you so, guys have not done. Before. I, I know, but that's, I'm really excited uh, because it could actually impact my salary hugely if, if enough people get on board. So, um, you know, no pressure to do it if you don't want to. It's understandable. If you do, it'll be cool. So she'll get you the information on it. I think she'll be like a three month trial if you want to do it and see if it works. And then um, we'll do, you know, I could do, it doesn't have to be that. I thought that would work because I used that box. And I know I could do a good commercial about how it's the ugliest box. And, you know, right, there's right. something fun about that. So I always say that. Yeah. So and so I give, get a chuckle and then I go, oh. I like what you're saying, though. Right, right. And the spots would run, you know, during the morning show and, and good, good times and stuff. So, and there's other places that we're thinking, because it just makes sense, like to get me, you know, to start endorsing. And and I, that's the only way I'm gonna get a raise because your channel is just put the kibosh and they don't give raises to the corporation right now. And so. I can actually do better for my family by like getting more endorsements. And so one of them that's going to be good is there's a hawk, Turkey's hot locker. I heard about that. Whoa! And they have Hawkeye gear. And so, you know, that makes sense because I do the pregame show for the Hawkeyes. Uh -huh. And so it makes sense. I say when I get my Hawkeye stuff, I go here, you know. And other there's a lot of other ones that would make a lot of sense. So ho hopefully they get out and yeah, the whole sales staff is supposedly selling these endorsements over August. So I'll see if I can. So is that a, is, is a clear somewhere. channel then saying they're, they're, do it? They're doing it. Yeah, our region in particular, the whole eastern Iowa, Quad Cities, and Cedar Rapids, and Iowa City, they're basically going out with packages to say, hey, we've got these local talented people, so go get them, you know, endorse, endorse places. So I've got a couple that I got already. So Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be excited. waiting for Beth to say something and yeah. go through that. Take a look at what, what she offers and, and I already got ideas of that would be get some other sound bites in there as well. <laughs> yeah, if there's anything in particular, it's that gives you a little more control over what you're um, advertising too. Is there's a certain product or if there's certain a certain aspect about your business you want to really focus on that gives you more direct advertising. And that's kind of measurable too. If we go you know, straight to that box and hopefully I can sell people on that back if we're working. I, I mean, I'm candid about it too. It's a great box. And ever since we got it, I don't clean up the litter as much as that. So I know. It's simple. And I, I was like a lot of people. The only problem with that is that if somebody already has one, they're not going to need a new one. Um, but for all the people out there that probably buy the cheap box of Walmart or whatever, the side of tree box, I mean, for all those people, they need to get this thing. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, we've sold hundreds. I saw someone that had one the other day and the, they were checking out. Oh, that they were guys well, that good. that's good because that means our staff is talking, talking about it. Um, but, yeah, what we would do is, um, to make it a complete thing, you just talk about the box. Have you switched to that crystal litter stuff? No, we haven't done that yet. We switched to the crystal litter, and that will, and I can get you a bag and you can try it. Yeah. Um, and then somewhere in the, in, in, so that's the, the item that keeps them coming back. Right. The litter. Right. And then when you got them in the store, you know, they can take a look at the, especially cat owners, cat toys, you know. Uh -huh. and, that's that thing, so. and then you would always put in, you know, you would put something like, and while you're in there, you got a place. That was all I got. Or whatever, you know. 
Yeah, and that's so now you've got a complete yeah, package, and I can say, yeah, yeah, and that way it's not just one item. So, but um, and plus with Jack, he loves doing it. So I, I, I'm, I want to be sure when I do these endorsements, I'm not promoting something I really don't do or use. And that's why, you know, I sell in yourself. All you do is yeah. sell in your soul. Right, right. But it, it's effective advertising. The guy we just talked to with her, he locker room said he did this for a morning show in Alabama because he's just moved up here from Alabama. And he said it was, like, so, he was so impressed at how effective it was. So. And he actually did a show, too, like you do. And he said he hears he heard people saying they heard his voice on the radio all the time. That's what's great about you having a presence on the show is that people hear your voice all the time. You know, yeah. It was a uh, uh, marketer, James Brown, uh, or Pat Land, when I was telling him when I came in the next time. Actually, I actually got to be like, on stage with them. And after the conversation, he goes, uh, you now can say you have a radio show, you have a TV show, and you now can say, and yes, I perform with David Kelly. And I'm like, oh, that is so funny. That's right. You're a celebrity, Ron. In my own ball. That's right. Burr. I like you guys. I think I can make that Never you can watch the baseball game. She wants, definitely wants a York. I think, yeah, a little less a very popular lady song. And I would get a, uh, a, a, a I think what we'd do is if we get a dog, we'll probably get two. We'll get uh, a big one. We like, I like big dogs, and she wants the Yorkie, so I figure it's a compromise. That seems to be what And I get a lot. Most time I'll get a lot. Yeah, most time I'll get a lot. I always tell the guy, let the lady get the first. Right, here. right, right. All right, we got a good half of the show left, so hopefully we got some stuff to talk about. <laughs> what? Well, welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jay Capron, your morning host. We have Tim Dwight coming up here at 9 o'clock, so stay tuned for that. Always great to catch up with Tim. He's going to talk about solar energy today. That's one of the things he works on, if you are unaware of that. Tim... Uh, that's one of the businesses he he works on, and uh, he's a big advocate of solar energy, and we'll find out just what's happening in, in the world of solar energy with Tim Dwight up in about 25 minutes. But right now, it is the Positively Petland Show. We continue on. If you're just tuning in, we have two beautiful dachshunds here in studio. Brown, One's brown, one's brown and white. The brown one has a little bit longer fur. And you can see them on our Facebook timeline. There's a great photo. You can see both of them and see who is running around. If they, now you'll know who that noise is uh, when you hear the little scampering of the feet. And uh, occasionally, uh, you know, their noises as they play with each other. You'll know exactly who that is. And uh, they are really, really cute dogs here at the KXIC Studios. And Ron Salzer's here. He's back from Vegas. Uh, we were talking about a few products, a couple rope products in the first segment. And I know you have some other things you want to talk about, right? Yeah, and with that uh, Vegas thing, I, I am one of those. That was the first time ever in Vegas, so we were a little apprehensive. You know, like, oh, uh, do we really want to expose our family to something like that? You know, that stuff is out there, but after the initial hour of, okay, that's it, that's it, we totally ignored it and, and enjoyed Vegas from a family perspective. Um, I'm not saying from us, uh, here, my kids are 17 and 19, so that age group, I, I don't know if I'd have a little child there. I, it, it's a lot of walking is what we found out, mm -hmm. uh, and it's up and down and hot and cold and all that kind of stuff. So Yeah, how was the weather out there? It was uh, over 100 degrees was it? Uh, the whole time. Time. The I, I you know how uh, winds in the winter make it feel colder and bitter and all that. Mm -hmm. I found that winds in the desert make it feel hotter, especially if there's any humidity in the air. Hot air. Yeah, mm -hmm. the first two days there's a little bit of humidity or whatever. You were like in a furnace <laughs> out there, you know, but we were soaking it up. I was I was just loving the heat. So good. Yeah, well, and and that's what's. Uh, it's so abnormal right now. You came back to this, and, and we're just, I'm enjoying it. And I was talking about that this morning is that I know we have listeners, and one of the great things I know about this, this radio show is we attract a wide variety of listeners. We have males, we have females, we have a lot of different ages that enjoy hearing the local news and getting updates and enjoying shows like this, the pet show. And people that listen work all different types of jobs. Stop interrupting me. Uh, and uh, 
because they work so many different jobs, I know that there's landscapers listening. I know that there's people who work outdoors, construction workers who tune in. So some of the people who work, uh, you know, with their hands and, and outdoors for the living for their living, and they have got to absolutely be loving this right now. It's 79 oh, yeah. degrees. I mean, most summers. This is the time of year where they bring the five Gatorades to work with them, and it's a hundred, you know, ninety-five with a heat index of one ten, and and then we're also usually telling people about the hot cars, and and that's still something to be aware of. But um, with all the heat, you know, we always talk on this show about keeping our pets hydrated, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there's really the safety issue. And right. it's just been a, a more mild summer. We haven't heard a lot about that. Right. So, but it is really nice, and I appreciate it. It's a great day to go out and. Walk your dog, and so we're talking pets here at the on the pet show, the Positively Petland show. Hey, if you ever have a question, we didn't really give a breed of the week. Is it the Dachshund? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the breed of the week. If you have a Dachshund, call and get your free bag of treats. Three one nine three five four zero eight hundred, and you actually get a free bag of dog food too. So you get a free bag of treats and a free bag of dog food courtesy of Neutral. Three one nine three five four zero eight hundred. If you have a Dachshund, and uh, they're gonna pull my camera yeah, down here. Yeah, it looked like we had. Fish on the leaf. Yes, are they are uh, having all kinds of fun here. And so again, the breed of the week is the dachshund. Claim your free bag of treats. All you have to do is tell us the name of your dog and a little bit about your dog. And then for all of you out there that are just listening to the show, if you have a question about an issue that's happening with your pets, this is the place to get that question answered at 319-354-0800. So call the show if you'd like here. We're still here for another 15 minutes or so. 319-354-0800. The Dachshund, and we've had the Dachshund before as a breed of the week, um, and so I don't know how much you want to get into the the breed, but uh, it's a it's always a, a good it's a German breed. Just yeah, go go through it a little bit. If right. You're good. So it is a German breed. I, I, sort of it. Wait, I think I still did the accent. Yeah, right. you did. Uh, <laughs> I love uh, it. Back in the 1600s, Germany uh, started breeding this dog, and it's no or it's Dachshund. Um, and that's how you would pronounce it from a German perspective, uh, means badger dog. And so it's one of those lively breeds out there that uh, worked for the hunters both above ground and below ground for the dachshund. So it's I've always been impressed about that too, Rob, because a badger is notorious as being a very dangerous animal. They, mm -hmm. They're aggressive, they're mean <coughs> at times, they're, they have sharp claws, they're, they can be vicious, and you got these little dachshunds. Right. It's like, wow. What's neat in, in, uh, is that they're all also a great family pet. So they, they're, they're great hunters, and you know, I think it's how you bring them up. It's just like us. How do we get brought up? You know, are we brought up in a friendly, fun, uh, non-aggressive environment, or are we brought up to, to be hunters? Mm -hmm. You know, type thing. And, and realize all dogs are hunters, and so that is their natural tendency uh, from birth. But because we nine, <laughs> why did you just say a number? No. Um, <laughs> uh, the uh, but since we bring them into our houses and we feed them kibble, they don't get that tendency, that natural tendency for to go hunt their food. Mm -hmm. They're not searching for their next meal. They know it's coming and it's gonna be put in this bowl here over in the corner. And and I rely on you guys to do that. So they so the dachshund can then turn into a this is a great family pet. Um, you'll hear stories uh, on all breeds where, oh, I knew a Yorkie that was really bitey or barky, or all oh, I know a dog that was bitey or barky. He realized all dogs bark and all dogs bite. It's what you promote within your house. Um, I've told you this too, Ron. Uh, the meanest dog I ever met in my life was a dachshund, mm -hmm. and it was because the owner taught this dog to bite at people's ankles, yes. and then he had a command, and it was. It was awful. I mean, he's a vicious little dog, and I felt bad for the dog himself because this kid, I didn't particularly like this kid. I didn't like going over to his house, but it was a friend of a friend type thing, and it was yeah. just, it was sad. I mean, he taught this dog to be mean, and it was this cute little dog, and it was, it was bad. It would bite at you. You have to jump up on stuff, so it would bite. So, again, training did that yeah. as opposed to what, what, is, what was the dog's uh, natural tendency as far as in our house goes. Uh, it, they're very uh, fun. We have a dachshund at our house named Callie. She's yeah. around 13 years old. Should have brought Callie. Yeah. <laughs> she, okay, so it would be the opposite of running around. She would go lay down. Yeah, so you got a bed here somewhere. <laughs> um, as all dogs get older, they get a, a lot lazier. And, yeah. and uh, Callie is one of those very meek, loving 
uh, dogs. And as you come up to Callie, she will roll oh. onto her back. <laughs> Yeah, and so, yeah, very submissive stance, very trusting stance. Uh, uh, she did bark at the beginning, uh, but all dogs bark. Mm -hmm. um, and here, we got her when she was a year and a half. Within 15 days, we had stopped the bark. That's right. And it was just that repetition training. I right, and about. it was, it, we weren't even, it was just, it, we didn't even have to discourage the barking other than ignoring her. If she was barking, we didn't give her attention. If she stopped barking, we gave her attention. 15 days it was done. That was pretty remarkable. We were impressed with that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's other things that you can do as well to stop the barking. Uh, potty training. Uh, I hear a lot of people, oh, certain breeds are tough to potty train. Again, it's the consistency and frequency of how you handle that. Mm -hmm. um, our dachshund uh, was not trained when we got her. She uh, did poop and pee in the house. Every single time, she would, in fact, would not do it outside for some reason. Mm -hmm. We reversed that trend. Um, that did take a couple of months to get it concrete, so that um, we didn't even think anymore about doing it. She just did it on her own, as far as going outside and, and doing her business. Mm -hmm. And so you can train all these dogs, and you can train an old dog a new trick. So um, realize that any breed uh, can do that, and dachshunds fall right into that. Um, as far as intelligence goes, you know, there's some meters out there or some people that rate the intelligence of dogs. Um, the dachshund gets in the middle range. I actually love dogs that are in the middle range of that. If they're too smart, they start training you, they get a little irritating. Um, dachshunds are right in the middle. So I look at it as that slow learner uh, aspect, and when they get it, they get it, and they hold on to it. They're not constantly trying to say, well, wait, what if I do it like this? Is that okay? You know, no. That child that always is trying to do things different, the dachshund just goes, oh, you want me to go outside and poop and pee? Okay, I'll do that. You know, it's kind of yeah, that yeah. feeling is, is what I got from, from Callie, our dachshund. Our, our mo my mother-in-law has a dachshund, Dolly, and uh, she's had some weight issues at times, uh, and that's a big deal for dogs. Big and important thing, yeah, yeah. So. And you control your dog's weight. Uh, don't don't let uh, anything else get in the way there. You can uh, decrease the amount of food. Callie, we watch her on a weekly, daily basis, whether we give her a couple of kibbles less or a couple of kibbles more. We actually are monitoring that on a daily basis. And they've got that long back. And, and you don't want to try that. You'll have back injuries uh, down the road. Uh, with an overweight dog, so you want to minimize that as much as you can with the weight aspect. The docs in the breed of the week, if you have one, call us 319 354 0800. 319 354 0800. We can hook you up with a free bag of treats and a free bag of dog food courtesy of Neutral. If you call the program, all, we have to, all you have to do is tell us the name of your dog and a little bit about your dog, and then you get those free treats and free food. 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. And again, we have done the Dachshund before, so I would imagine there's some of you listening that uh, won before here uh, for the Dachshund. Um, but if you do want to call, you can, 319-354-0800. We do like getting those personal accounts of the different dogs and find out a little bit about their personalities to help add to the show. Uh, but yeah, you, I know you have a few more things to talk about. We still have a, a few minutes left. So what else do you have to yeah, This is something really simple. Uh, it's a canned, I would say food, but this isn't uh, total nutrition here. Uh, the, the label is Fruitables. Um, one of them is called Switch, and it's fresh pumpkin blend. And then the other one is a sweet potato, sweet potato uh, blend. Uh, and it's called Digestive Supplement. Those are these products, when I met with the manufacturer, one is, is I used to have a um, product, in, uh, pumpkin in a can in our store. Pumpkin is just this magic little uh, uh, vegetable. What is it, a vegetable or bread? Yeah, maybe vegetable. Uh, I mean, let's see. We won't uh, go uh, let's, uh, let, me, let me Google it. My <laughs> daughter uh, who's, who does the biology side, she goes, Dad, it doesn't matter whether it's on a vine or not. It's where the seeds are. And I go, so what is it? Pumpkin is not a vegetable. It's a fruit. So, in fact, it's a berry, they say. And it's just a huge berry. This, the the, pro, the can from Fruitables called Switch, is designed when you're, they made it so when your dog is switching from one food to another and you're concerned about the digestive tract and, you know, whether they get loose stools or not, they said supplement it with this product. And I go, well, I like that aspect, but this product is so much more valuable than that. If your dog is constipated, this is an equalizer. Pumpkin is an equalizer um, for your stool consistency. So if, 
if your dog is constipated, you would want to feed this product. If your dog has loose stools, and if there is some other things going on with your dog, like uh, uh, viruses and stuff like mm -hmm. that, obviously that's got to get checked out and taken care of. Um, this is when you know their bellies are just a little upset, or they have that digestive tract that just produces loose stools. You can supplement it with this product, and you're not, you know, it's got kind of a tablespoon or two uh, on every meal, and you will get solid stools as a result. It is a wonderful product um, in, in so many different ways. So it's an equalizer uh, for constipation as well as loose stools. And then uh, when you're doing a switch of food, this is another great product to have just to get you through that changeover product. Um, Make it tastes a little better, maybe for the dogs. Uh, it's, it's a little very, treat. Yeah. yeah, very attractive. It looks like a can of soup, you know, size-wise. It's a metal can, and it, it says "Switch" on the front. It's a Fruitables is the brand, and it's pumpkin. And what's the other one they have there? The other one is called Digestive Supplement, and so this one has a little bit more variety in it. It's based on sweet potato, uh, but vitamins, fiber, ginger fortified. So they're doing some other things, gluten free. That developed. I mean, that's what these products are are all based on. And this one is more of the long term. You know, put it in there. Um, it, it's it's again putting fiber in their diet and, and all that. So it's really good stuff as far as nutrition goes, but it's also good as far as uh, keeping stools consistent. Uh, this is your you know trade shows. I, it's easy to get uh, excited about seeing the new toys and stuff like that because they're mm -hmm. really exciting. When I came to this booth, I think my uh, Koi, our inventory manager, like went around right, to settle down. <laughs> I was cool. like, oh my gosh, there's a pumpkin in the paint can product for dogs and cats now. I love this. And it's something that I've been looking for for a long time because there are so many people that will benefit their cats and dogs with these products. Um, and right now are listening and going, yeah, I have struggled with that loose stool, or my dog is constipated, and it just hurts me when I see that. Um, here's some really all-natural products that solve uh, most of those problems for you, and it, uh, we get such uh, have had such good success with this. I think it's the product that you should always have in your house, just in case, or if you have a product, a dog or cat with long-term problems. Well, then it's something that you're using on a daily basis. Is that uh, is that is in the store right now? Yep, the on our shelves right now. Which product uh, was pumpkin, and it can help uh, with that issue. Of course, uh, we'd love to have our dogs have no issues, but things crop up, and that's why we talk about them here on the pet show. 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. As we uh, start to get ready to round out the show and wrap things up on a Thursday, every Thursday in the 8 o'clock hour, it is the Positively Petland Show with Ron Salzer from Petland of Iowa City. We've had a lot of fun today, and these uh, these these pups have been uh, just going crazy. They're, you can see the picture on Facebook, these two beautiful dachshunds, and uh, what they've really been doing most, right now they're chewing on the blind, the cords on the blind. Yeah, uh, so but, that's but, a comedy. Right, but what they were doing for most of the show is chasing each other, they'd like take turns. They'd wrestle, yeah. one would get up and run around the other side of the studio, the other one would chase it, and they'd tackle each other, they'd wrestle, 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 run to the other side, and they, they finally are starting to slow down a little bit, but yeah. it's been an hour, you know, and they're just uh, they're still moving. So it's uh, fun, fun to be had, and you could always have a lot of fun at Petland of Iowa City. Um, you just saw us there the other day, Ron. Uh, we picking up some crickets for uh, my wife's class. Yeah. Has got some frogs, um, and so they they need some some food. So we got some crickets. Uh, those are available. So. Yeah, if you have a, a reptile or anything else like that, you know, like Petland's place, you can go to get some food for for, uh, for those guys. And also, you have um, well, everything really: fish, reptiles, fish, rabbits, animals. birds, parakeets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all the supplies that go with them. And, yeah, thousands of supplies at Petland of Iowa City. So we're ready to wrap up. Anything else you want to squeeze in? I'm just always reminding everybody: uh, we do have Nutro Natural Choice, our medium-sized bags. Those are. Ten dollars off right now. You, I don't know. This is a neutro thing lately, where they're just doing significant discounts to get you to try their product. They've obviously seen some success with it. So right now, the medium bags are ten dollars off. That's that's incredible. You're not going to see this come through anytime soon. It's while supplies last. We bought up large, so we have stacks of food in our store. Uh, because we know that you, this is something that you want to take uh, take advantage of. And the reason they do it, they're confident that once you start 
with Nutro, you'll see results, and you're going to want to keep doing it. So, yeah, it's good. Good product. Uh, we've had Nutro in here on this show, and uh, they back up what they what they have, and they put a lot, a lot of stuff in there. A lot of uh, good good things inside that food. Neutral. So ten bucks off right now, medium bags. Yeah. Anything else? I'm um, just also reminding everybody, five dollar meal trims. That is something that is extremely popular. Yeah. Uh, no appointments necessary. Just bring your dog or cat or a small animal in, and we'll do a nail trim. No appointments necessary. Just come on in. Oh, you do do the small animals too, huh? Yep. All right. So uh, here's two small animals. <laughs> they get up. Oh, he's saying goodbye. Yeah. Bye. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Two dachshunds here in the studio. We had a lot of fun. It's a positively Petland show. Community calendar before we hit the top of the hour. Tim Dwight scheduled to join me here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for that. I'm uh, supposed to be here to talk about solar energy. So just walked in the that. door. Did he? Mm -hmm. Hey Tim. <laughs> we'll get that. We'll get up there in a second. Back more after this. Good morning. <laughs> It's been cooler than normal this summer, but Christmas in July. What's up? What's happening? It's Life is good. Two of them. Where's the other one? We had two eclipses last time. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you, man. That's what we're talking about today. Okay. I said I was the Iowa Solar Energy Trade Association, which I started, which is one of the five policy. It's going to market here in the state.